want to find out what's going on in your community? El Observador is San Jose's bilingual weekly newspaper. Go to your local newsstand and pick up your free copy today. Looking for the skills and training you need to get a new career? Call CTC, the Center for Training and Careers, and start working towards that new career today. Call CTC in San Jose. Good evening. I'm Siwapili Rose Amador, and this is Native Voice TV. Welcome to the show. This evening we're going to meet Earl Nakoni, Earl Richard Nakoni. Is that right? <laughs> That's correct. And Earl, you are Kiowa? Enrolled member of the Kiowa tribe of Oklahoma. Of Oklahoma. Were you raised in Oklahoma? No, I was uh, lucky enough to be raised in Southern California because my father's from Oklahoma, Stecker, Oklahoma, mm -hmm. and my mother's from uh, Kauai in Hawaii, and they met halfway, and that would be San Diego, California, ah. and my father was in the Marines at uh, Marine Corps Recruit Depot in San Diego, uh -huh. and I was born in the Balboa Naval Hospital in oh, San you Diego. Were. Right. Oh, you were? Okay, so you were raised in San Diego area? I was raised in the San Gabriel Valley, uh, maybe about two hours north of uh, San Diego, and I had the best of both worlds because my mother being from Hawaii, we would spend our summers in Hawaii, and towards the end of summer we would head out to Oklahoma with oh, my dad's nice. family. Oh, nice. So what was it like growing up being Native? Well, I can remember one of the first times that I knew that I was Native was um, I was about six or seven years old. My ball went over the fence. I climbed the fence to get the ball. Mm -hmm. As I was going back towards the fence, the gate, the neighbor caught me and she grabbed me by the ear, pulled me over to the fence and squeezed my neck in that <laughs> fence. Oh and my. she was saying, don't ever come back over here, you little red savage. <gasps> and that was my first experience wow. of being recognized as Native American. And it was my first experience of racism or um, just that um, it wasn't cool to be Indian uh, wow. back in the 60s. And that really makes an impression on a kid. It does, you definitely. Know, when, uh, especially when an adult treats them like right. that. Wow. So were you raised, um, I guess, uh, with Native activities, or did your parents keep you away from that? Do you speak the language? Uh, I speak some of my Kiowa language and then a lot of the Hawaiian pidgin you know, that um, I picked up from my uncles, my aunties, mm -hmm. my mom, and um, uh, sign language as well for our Kiowa people, uh, passed on by my dad, my aunties, and my uncles mm -hmm. as well. And it's really a, a great opportunity to be able to um, live in both those, those worlds and gather as much culture as I can. Mm -hmm. And knowing both sides of my family has really been a plus. Oh, that's good. Now, you're very involved in the community. Um, I see you at all the powwows, right? right? <laughs> and you're an, either the arena director, the announcer, but you're involved, you're gourd dancing. Tell me a little bit about everything that you've done. Well, I started out as a, uh, a singer. Mm -hmm. I sang with uh, many of the drums, a lot of the um, well-known drums, Grey Horse Singers, yeah. uh, Bad Medicine, uh, Millard Clark. And, uh, and my uncle's drum, No Name Singers. Um, they were out of Fresno, Kingsburg, California, but they would sing Southern songs uh -huh. from Oklahoma. And so I started there probably in the 90s, really getting involved with um, singing. And one day someone asked me to help out as an arena director because their arena director didn't show up. Mm -hmm. And I was just um, in shock at first. And I went over to my uncle and I said, you know, they asked me to be the arena director and I'm not sure what to do. My uncle said, just go over there and I'll tell you everything you need to know <laughs> in about 10 minutes. On the job so, training. On the job <laughs> training. And, and it was eye-opening and it was inspiring to have that, that knowledge that uh, being taught by my uncle. Mm -hmm. and, um, 
couple years later, they asked me to be an MC. Randy Burns with the uh, Native American AIDS Project asked me to MC their, their powwow, and again, I went to my uncle. <laughs> And, um, now, and had your uncle been a uh, arena director and announcer? He had, past? and um, had a lot of knowledge and a lot of things that um, regarding protocol and uh, how to project yourself and how to entertain. You know, he said that's the biggest thing. You don't want a powwow to go, you know, flat, mm -hmm. and boring. You want to entertain them, and and so he shared a lot of that information with me. And even as I was announcing, you know. My aunties, my uncles, they would send little notes over to uh -huh. me. Hey, you know, don't do this, don't do that, you know, um, try this, you know. So it was really helpful. Uh -huh. And especially um, from a lot of the people, a lot of my relatives from Oklahoma definitely helped out. Because it's really a skill. To, I mean, because it's, it's, you know, it either comes natural or it doesn't. Right, you know? right. <laughs> and you have to have the personality to... Um, make people laugh and right. educate people and just do a little bit of everything. Well, it's, it's very much a learning process, even while you're doing it, you know, and, and it's great to MC with another, uh, a co MC. Mm -hmm. you know, you really feed off of each other. The energy goes both ways. And I learn a lot from uh, guys like Tom Phillips, um, Reuben Littlehead, uh, Dale Oldhorn. You know, these are all people that I've worked with and admired mm -hmm. and you know they've kind of helped me um, along the path of, of being an MC arena director and and I think it's crucial that I started out as an arena director because I really you know understand the protocol mm -hmm. and and I know what's coming up next you know and it's great to work with arena directors that have experience you know it's tough to be an MC when you're teaching an arena director. Okay, so, we're uh, talking about this like everybody knows what we're talking about. What's an <laughs> arena director? Arena director is the man, okay? They're the one in charge of that arena. They determine who's going to dance next, they determine who's going to sing, and they also determine who the judges are if it's a contest powwow. But the arena director is the one that runs the show. Mm -hmm. And basically, as the MC, I listen to whatever he directs whatever he says is next is next so you go get the parties that are supposed to be there and let people know that they're next up to do whatever right and there's sometimes you'll get a arena director that isn't quite sure what is going to happen next like if you have a grand entry you have the flag song and then you have a, a veteran song or you have a um, uh, a round dance you know all those flags eagle staffs head staff they need to dance around the arena and there's a couple of these drums that you know just won't you know let you know that this is what they're going to do uh -huh. so you really have to be on your toes as an arena director and an MC and you really need to communicate without words but you know just a look or you know the wave of his hand or his his stick uh -huh. and um, to know what to tell the dancers to do you know so, it's so I would guess that the arena director is a lot more physical right. than the hands on. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to run away there and get someone to do something. And, and, and the MC is just the mouthpiece. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever the committee asks them to do, they usually have an agenda set up. And there's times when they don't have an agenda set up. That's where you have to ad lib. You know, uh -huh. you kind of go with the flow. You know, remember to entertain. You also have protocol. So it all comes together. And you have to try and keep everything on schedule, too, right, and they right. throw in more things for you to, right. to try and squeeze in. I've been at a powwow where I was the arena director, and the MC says, okay, I know the powwow is supposed to be done, but, you know, let's have another round of intertribals. And that's where I, as the arena director, you know, have to step in, contact the committee, let them know, hey, we're contracted to 6 o'clock. You know, it's nice that we have great weather and everything, mm -hmm. but, you know, some of these dancers have to get on the road. These singers have to get their drum back, you know, right. back home. And, um, you know, we want them to get there safely and not, you know, be rushing or, or get a ticket. So what's the hardest thing you've had to deal with on either being an arena director or being an MC? I think as an MC, um, you know, you're, you're there. I mean, you're, you're out there. Everybody sees you. Everything you do, it's so critical to make sure that uh, you don't do anything wrong. You don't offend um, a tribe or uh, a member of that tribe. Mm -hmm. 
and you always you're always on your toes and I think the most difficult part is people that tap you on the shoulder while you're going through the program mm -hmm. and interrupt you ah. that's really difficult and uh, there was a hand drum contest and you know I was introducing the the singers and all of a sudden this guy taps me on the shoulder and says hey you want to hear the song I you know I I just composed <laughs> and I was like <laughs> not right now yeah. you know and yeah. I'm like security <laughs> <laughs> Um, but it, it's really difficult to, for those people to understand that, you know, I have a job and, right. um, you know, there's a sign-up list and, you know, the singers have all signed that list and we're into the contest already. And so I go and take a break, you know, I run to the porta potty and who's out there waiting for me as I get out? This guy. And he starts singing <laughs> to me. So this is one of my power uh -huh. stalkers that um, just really has to <laughs> sing that song again, to me. Huh? Right. <laughs> and um, uh, as, as funny as it might seem, you know, it's kind of scary, you know, because, um, again, we're out there in front of the yeah. crowd all the time, and yet there's no me time, you know, maybe just five minutes or ten mm -hmm. minutes that we... And you have really to be prepared to for the next thing to right, say right. it right away. So we're kind of on a roll, and if something interrupts that roll, it really, it's hard to get back on track. Sometimes. You ever had the power go off? I've had the power go off. Um, lights go out? <laughs> quite a few times. Uh, again, no lights. Um, and during a spotlight dance, that's where the, the one spotlight is on the dancer. I've had the spotlight go out. You know? <laughs> that's where you get the flashlight out, right? <laughs> um, so a lot of things happen um, in that arena, and, and they happen for a reason. And um, it's just those, those things on the outside of the arena that, you know, where I need some me time or, you know, mm -hmm. with, with my wife time, um, or my relatives, that a lot of them come out to these powwows. And, um, yeah, it's kind of hard to separate from the MC to, you know, Earl that does dishes and mm -hmm. has a rabbit, you know, so. And a lot of kittens. Right, <laughs> and a lot of kittens, too. <laughs> Right. So tell me about gore dancing. Do you want to explain what it is? Well, gore dancing is one of the oldest styles of dance that we have as Kiowa people. Mm -hmm. This is where it started in uh, 800, 900 years, 1,000 years. You know, we're not sure how old this style of dance is. And same with those songs that accompany that style of dance. These are songs that have been passed on and passed on. And um, the normal lead gourd singer has about three to four hundred songs wow uh, in his head you know and um and it's always good to dance to those ones that have kiowa words you know those are the ones when you know i had the privilege of dancing with my dad my grandpas my uncles my cousins and um um and they would dance and they would hear these songs with kiowa words they would cry you know and i never understood mm -hmm. you know as a as a younger gourd dancer, and then it hit me, you know, ah, those Kiowa words, you know, and um, so the Kiowa gourd clan, uh, I'm a member, and there's the Black Wolf Gourd Society, there's also the Golden State Gourd Society, those are the pre three predominant um, gourd clans or gourd societies in mm -hmm. California, and again, a, a lot of people were um, saying for years that the gourd dance, you know, you had to be a member of the military. Uh, well, the Kiowa Gourd Clan, which that's where it all started, mm -hmm. um, says no. We've got several members of our gourd clan that are not members of the military. And how does someone become a gourd singer? Well, a gourd, a gourd dancer is pretty much uh, determined by the individual. And to become a member of the Kiowa Gourd Clan, you have to be Kiowa, and you have to be introduced by another uh, Gord Clan member. And you go out to uh, Carnegie, Oklahoma, and you, um, during the July 4th weekend, uh, that's when we, we dance for four days. Mm. And uh, out here in California, it's different. The Gord dance is at 11 o'clock. Right. Um, 10 it's always in the before morning. the powwow. Right. You go back home, and the earliest is 2 o'clock. 
And so we dance, we dance till sun goes down. And um, so a lot of our, our new gourd dancers in Carnegie, they come out, their family uh, members, other gourd clan members dance with them uh, for those four days. And uh, again, from two o'clock until sundown. And it's usually about, um, about that time, you know, food is all being prepared, mm -hmm. all the camps, you know, so um, after the gourd dance is done, and again, the gourd dance doesn't go past uh, sundown. Ah. And we've had a couple go past sundown, and I always get chewed out, you know, even though it's in, here, in California. I have Kiowa relatives that will pull me aside and say, hey, you know better, you know? And um, so, again, some very strict rules when it comes to the Kiowa Gourd Clan. So there's we'll really a lot things. of education when it comes to so many different aspects of the powwow. Right. The, the Gourd Dance has, um, as Kiowa Gourd Clan members, we have the responsibility to educate, to share the history, mm -hmm. and to share the, um, um, I guess, ceremonial uh, significance of the gourd dance and those are the three things that we're taught as Kiowa Gourd Clan members and to have that responsibility that authority to share that um, uh, those three things is a lot of responsibility and I can um, see that. you know there's been times where people have disagreed with me on on a lot of those issues but uh, I have the Kiowa Gourd Clan behind me you know to to back me up other mm -hmm. Kiowa Gourd Clan members here in California that can So it's help always um, a Kiowa Gourd Dancer that is the head Gourd Dancer at most? Um, at least for a lot of the powwows that I'm involved with, um, again, uh, if, if there is no head Gourd Dancer, they usually turn to a, uh, a local society or, or clan in the area. Mm -hmm. But uh, many times, again, our Kiowa Gourd Clan members are asked to be uh, head gourd dancers. But again, uh, I've seen other, other tribes, other gourd societies, gourd clans also as head gourd dancers. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you for the education. Um, since we're talking about this, would you like to sing a song? Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is a Kiowa hymn, and this is uh -huh. one of the ones that when my dad passed in 2008, my aunties, my uncles, and my cousins got up and we sang this song, mm -hmm. you know, his, one of his favorites. On high ghetto me, we cado cado cadi on my ghetto me, on a mota o me, on high ghetto me, we cado cado cadi do, on a mota o me, on high ghetto, on high ghetto, on high ghetto me. We cado cado cadi on my gado me on a mota o me on high gado me. Ahu, ahu. Thank you. Mm. What an honor to have you sing that hymn. Thank you. Now, I have some pictures of you. <laughs> One when you were a little boy, and maybe we can take a look at those and you can right. tell me what's going on here. Now, you were how old here? This was my first grade uh, picture. Oh, and, um, you notice I have all my teeth. Uh -huh. <laughs> about <laughs> good um, smile. This is about uh, maybe a year before I had my two front teeth knocked out <laughs> playing <laughs> oh, that's baseball. Cute. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's what do we have picture. next here? Okay, this, this is, was uh, Stanford. This is a Stanford powwow, 2009. I was the MC with Reuben Littlehead. Wow, that's quite an honor. We had a great time. It's uh, one of the biggest powwows here in Northern California. Okay, what else do we have? Okay. And this is 2011, the Stanford powwow, and I was asked to carry the United States Marine Corps flag in uh, as part of the honor guard for the Stanford powwow. Hmm. 
Oh, great. Are you, were you in the Marine Corps? I was in the Marines for 11 years, from 1975 to 1986. I was a 08 which is a artillery scout, so calling in gunfire and naval gunfire, airstrikes, and artillery. Okay, and this is Berkeley, Yes, right? Indigenous Peoples Day. That was October 8th, and this is part of our gourd dance, and mm -hmm. that's Gail Burns with a shawl walking in front of us. She's uh -huh. placing money in front of us, and that's one of the ways that we honor um, our gourd dancers, is placing money on the ground. And we just crumple it up and throw it on the ground, and when that song is finished, mm -hmm. I have one of the people on my left or on my right pick that money up, and they mm -hmm. take it over and place it on the drum, or they give that money to a, an elder or um, uh, a family in need. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. The next picture. Now this, I think the last one we have here, <laughs> but this was where you were honored by KQED. Tell me about that. Right. This right here, I was the MC for the KQED uh, Native American Local Heroes. Mm -hmm. And we have Marvin Paddock. We have um, Aurora Mamea. Mm -hmm. We have Michael Duran, and we have, uh, let's see, that's um, Nathan Costello or Nathan Leroy. And I was the MC for that event wow, this past great. year. And KQED asked me to MC the event again this year. And they had a little surprise. They said, You were nominated and you won an award. And so we're going over the program, and I'm like, Okay, wait, say that again. <laughs> <laughs> so do I get to announce myself? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and she says, again. And I said, so wait a minute. Um, wait, say that again? <laughs> I oh, just, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Um, it's always a great honor to, to MC an event like that, honoring other Native Americans. And, oh gosh, it was just uh, a shock, and yet um, um, I'm really honored. To, wow. to receive that award. What an accomplishment. That's really Thanks. something. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Now, you also work, um, tell me what you do with, with your, uh, your well, job. I'm a program coordinator for United Indian Nations, and we've been in here in the Bay Area here for, gosh, since 1979. And we're now located in San Leandro, and we're a Workforce Investment Act program mm -hmm. along with um, uh, Community Service Block um, grants, um, and we also utilized um, Recovery Act funds. And our program uh, ensures that a lot of our Native youth, our Native adults that have not completed high school, uh, have them pursue a GED, mm -hmm. high school degree, or onto a community, uh, community college and then onto a four-year college or university. That's and, good. Uh, yeah, it's an excellent opportunity. We also provided uh, jobs for a lot of our, our Native youth, ages 16. And did you do training as well, or just the job placement? Uh, pretty much job placement. We assist with uh, resume um, writing, mm -hmm. cover letters. Uh, we, we assist with job search. And we also assist with uh, uh, getting these kids, uh, foster care youth especially, back into the community, back with um, uh, Native American um, households mm -hmm. and get them motivated to finish school. So that's... So you give them supportive services so they can complete whatever they're doing. Right. Uh, we have like bus passes, um, BART passes. We have um, clothing allowance, uh, $150 in clothing so that they can have clothes to go to school. Books um, are very important. Books are expensive. That's for sure. It's we, those college. Right. And we try to help out as much as we can with the basic ed um, mm -hmm. courses and uh, at vocational schools and as well as uh, community colleges. So we're definitely uh, motivating them. That's the Are key. you seeing a high dropout rate right now with the Native youth or is there more of a push to go to finish school? Well, there's a high dropout rate and you would think it would be in high school. High dropout rate in seventh grade eighth grade, Whoa. you know, before they even get to high school. So, and it's really showing up on those that fill out their job applications. Uh -huh. You know, they're afraid to put down that they're a high school dropout. Um, they really want to, And with know, everything being electronic, it's not like they can get away with that, right, just saying right. that anymore. Even the, 
uh, food service jobs, McDonald's, um, Wendy's. Um, these jobs require at least a GED. Right. You know, and to be competitive, high school diploma, and to be even more competitive, a little bit of college, you know, AA degree. You can't even go into the military now without a GED, right? Right. You're right. Yeah. And it's not like the way it used to be, you know. Right. I mean, the kids really need to be serious about school. And to drop out at such a young age, they have to go back. They have so to. many of them think that they can just fall back on the military. And oh that's not the way it is. You know, it's really difficult. Well, we have one minute left. <laughs> Time's flying. Uh, but I really appreciate you coming on. And I appreciate all the work you do in the community. Oh. And it's always a pleasure to hear you out there at the powwows. <laughs> Do you have a parting message for our youth? Stay in school. Um, respect your elders. Develop a line of communication with your parents, your siblings, and yeah, stay in school. Yeah, that's a good message. Thank you. And thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. And we'll see you out there on the Powwow Trail. Ahoo, ahoo. <laughs> and we'll see you next week on Native Voice TV. Good night. I'm